This is Word Hunt. It's a simple game. Draw words, get points. The longer, the better. Now, I have a problem with this game. I'm bad at it. Even worse, my friend is good. Like, really good. This is the story of how I went from this to this. Before we get ahead of ourselves, here's a real description of the rules of Word Hunt. Word Hunt is played on a 4x4 board of letters between two players. Each player has 1 minute and 20 seconds to get as many points as they can. You find words by dragging your finger between adjacent tiles to spell them out with more letters meaning more points. After time finishes, the winner gets a crown on their screen, and the loser, the red X of humiliation. As you can see, I am quite experienced with the red X of humiliation, and I think it's time we do something about that. The first method I tried to fix this issue was actually given to me by a friend, and was pretty simple. Just get good. That friend was the same friend who keeps beating me, by the way. Let's call them Ella for the sake of convenience. Discarding that Ella and I may have a conflict of interest, the option of actually practicing word hunt until my skills were at a high enough caliber to challenge Ella herself was doomed from the start. Even after I was beating most of my friends in the game, Ella would still regularly score double or even triple my score. This continued on for a few months, until in passing, someone made a joke about me making a bot to play word hunt. After laughing for a few moments, I realized that a bot to play word hunt was really not outside the range of possibilities, and I got straight to work. Playing Word Hunt is really composed of two separate tasks, finding words and entering words. If we want my computer to be able to play Word Hunt at a high level, it's going to need to be able to do both of these much faster than Ella. First off, how is our program going to find words? For human, the easiest way to find words is to randomly try constant vowel clusters until you get a word that works. This is because most of us cannot recall every word in existence within 80 seconds. Luckily for us, that is easily within a computer's capabilities. I started by having a list of every word in the English dictionary, which is surprisingly not that large of a file, only taking up about 2 megabytes. I could then loop through those words, checking if they were present in the letter board. One easy way to check if these words are in the board of letters is using recursion. For those who don't know or just need a refresher, recursion is a programming technique for when a problem can be solved by solving a smaller form of itself. For example, if we wanted to see if a word was a palindrome, meaning it is the same both forwards and backwards, we could see that if the first and last letters are equal and the rest of the word is still a palindrome, then the word must be a palindrome. We can also see that if a word has no characters in it or is a single character, it is also a palindrome. From this, we can just create a recursive function like so. Going back to our original problem, we can also do this with finding words. If we start on a certain letter, we can simplify the problem down to checking if we can find the rest of the word starting with one of the surrounding cells. To make sure we don't accidentally use the same square twice in one word, we can also pass in an array of letters that are already used. When we get back a path from the recursive call, we can then just append the spot the word starts at to the beginning of the path and return that. When the word we need to find is the empty string, we can just return an empty path since we have nothing left to find. If at one point we cannot find the rest of the word, we can just return none and let that ripple up in the recursive chain. We just need to repeat this process for every letter on the board until we either find the word or do not. Then we just need to repeat that process for every word in our dictionary. Okay, sorry if that was a lot. We now know the path we need to get to Word Hunt, but how can we actually get it to Word Hunt? I have an iPhone SE, which is what Word Hunt will be running on, and the best method to communicate with an iPhone SE, to my knowledge, is a little known feature in the accessibility settings. If you activate Assistive Touch, you can actually connect a Bluetooth mouse to your iPhone and use it to control a small pointer. After a bit of searching, I found that Tain Le, a developer based out of Vietnam, has been maintaining a program that allows you to emulate a Bluetooth mouse or keyboard using the Bluetooth chip built into a Raspberry Pi. Of course, all this is just planning, and we still need to put this down in code. Ooh, look, we're back in the code window. Like the last video, I wrote this code in Python. I may have had some performance gains if I wrote in a faster programming language like Rust, but the Bluetooth program I am using is written in Python, so it is much easier to just stick to the same language. I made a simple word hunt board class to wrap the recursive method for finding words I went over earlier. Here you can see the base cases, the recursive call, and the starting function. I also implemented an iterator class that allows the words generated by the word hunt board class to be easily accessed by a for loop. Before before being sent to the iterator, the words are sorted from longest to shortest to maximize points per second. For controlling the Bluetooth mouse movements, I had to write an additional wrapper to deal with some issues I ran into. The first is that the Bluetooth mouse specification requires the change in position of the mouse, not the absolute position of the mouse, and it just so happens that iOS does not treat this information linearly. To work around these limitations, my wrapper takes in a position that is a multiple of 10 on the screen and then moves the pointer in 10 by 10 increments until it reaches the desired position. It also has a method to reset the position of press down 
and release the mouse cursor. Tying it all together is the main file, which simply asks for the letters on the board, creates the word hunt board iterator, and then loops through each word that exists on the board, relaying the instructions to the mouse. Now that all the code is covered, all I need to do to run it is SSH into my Raspberry Pi, pull from the GitHub, start the Bluetooth server, connect the pointer to my phone, try to figure out why the pointer won't connect to my phone, see that the documentation for the Bluetooth library got taken down, use the Wayback Machine to try to figure out what on earth I'm supposed to be doing, cry, learn Tmux, cry, try to run the code again, and there it goes. See? Simple. As the cursor began to swerve strikingly around the board, drawing words like lightning bolts, the numbers began to rise. In that moment, I saw victory raising itself up over the horizon, a thousand points cascading as the dings and buzzes of each solution glistened in a spectacular symphony. A wave of gold overcame me seeing the final score. Ella had scored 22,000 points. My bot had scored 164,000. I had done it. The endless wall of red was interrupted by a shining yellow crown. Ella, who was definitely not aware I was working on a word hunt bot, was incredibly surprised and distraught at her loss. On paper, I had won the game, but was it really me who had won? I put all this time and effort into creating a word hunt bot, and the only real difference is the color of a symbol on my screen. However, you know what else changes a symbol from red and actually makes an impact? Pressing the subscribe button. It takes almost no time and can really help out the channel too. Thanks for watching all the way through. To end off the video, I will just leave you with the unedited video of the bot scoring 164,000 and some chill tunes. The Discord and the code are linked below.